So today we're gonna to be checking out Sun Gold Power's 6,500 watt inverter. This is a 120, 240 volt split phase inverter with a pure sine wave output. But if you don't need to have the 240 volts, you can actually program it to only output 6,500 watts of 120 volts. Now this inverter does come with a connection for grid power and a connection for generator power as well. And it has two MPP charge controllers that can handle a maximum of 5,000 watts a piece. So this inverter can take a total of 10,000 watts of solar. And the charge controllers can handle up to a maximum of 550 volts open circuit voltage from the solar panels. That means that they can handle a higher voltage solar array. So first off, let's go ahead, we'll lay this down, we'll get some covers off of it and we'll take a look inside. So this inverter, comes in weighing about 42 pounds. So this is like easy for one person to be able to lift and install. Take this cover off. So on the left-hand side, you have your grid connection and then you have your output from the inverter. And then on the other side of it, you have the generator connection. And on the right-hand side, you have your two MPPT charge controllers. This is where you hook up your solar arrays. And as you look inside, you can see that there are three cooling fans here in the bottom, which I assume are blowing air down because on each side, there is a screen for the air intake to be able to catch any dust before it goes inside. And they're really easy to take off and clean. So now let's take a closer look at the bottom of the inverter. So you can see we've already got holes with grommets installed for the grid, the load and the generator. So you can see we got connections for CTs, which are optional. Got a Wi-Fi connection. We also have RS-45 or CAN bus. This is your battery communication port. We have some parallel connection ports. You can use up to six of these inverters in parallel. And then you have a set of dry contacts and you can use these to be able to start a generator. And on the right hand side, you have openings for your battery negative and positive. You have an opening for your solar array wiring, and then you have your on off switch. So now we're gonna take the Sun Gold Power Inverter, we're gonna mount it over here on the wall, and we will get it all wired up, we'll get it programmed, and we'll see how it works. So the top of the inverter has these keyhole slots, and they are roughly eight and a quarter inches apart from each other, so we can go ahead, put a couple screws in the wall, and then we should be able to just hang it up. See my drill bit? It's a little bit wonky. Oh yeah, I'm being 42 pounds. That is pretty easy to hang. There's two more mounting holes on the inside. So down here on the floor in front of it, I've got a Sun Gold Power heated server rack battery, and this is what we're gonna use uh, for the battery for the inverter. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the battery on See if we can boot this up and get it programmed. We'll make sure the inverter switch is on. Turn on the battery. And look, we got lights starting to boot up. So in the manual that comes with the inverter, which it's actually a fairly thick manual, it's like 63 pages, a little more in depth than some of these. Um, it does have, it does list out all the settings that you can program in here. It's somewhere over 70 settings. So I'm gonna look through this. I'm gonna see if I can get it set up the way I want it. And then after that, we'll go ahead, we'll completely, we'll get it wired out the rest of the way. We'll see if we get some grid power. We'll get the load wired up so that we can test the load and see if we can get one solar array hooked to it.
All right, I've got the Sun Gold inverter. I've got it all wired up now. So I still need to put in the battery communication cable. This did come with the inverter. So we're gonna plug this cable in to the port that says RS45 and CAN. And here on the Sun Gold power inverter, we're gonna plug into the port that says link in. And the next thing I have, this is their Wi-Fi adapter. It comes with a little mount so that you can mount this on the wall. It's just kind of like the Wi-Fi antenna. And then it just has another RJ45 connector that's gonna plug into the one that says Wi-Fi. And then our Wi-Fi adapter will just slide in right there. So now that I got it all wired up, let me show you what we got. So we do have grid power here. It, it did say to use eight gauge wire. I used six gauge wire and it was very tight. I think that's the biggest you can go. So we've got grid, we've got a ground, and then we've got the load connection. And then we've over here, we've got one solar array wired up. I have it going through a PV disconnect and then out to the solar panel array. So I think we're ready to go ahead and power it up and, and really test this thing out now. So I'll uh, go ahead and turn the inverter on. Now I'll turn on the battery. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn the grid power on and it does have a breaker here on the side for the grid power. Turn it on. Just check in the grid power and it's good. And the last thing to turn on is gonna be the solar power. So turn on that. See it the voltage pop up. So on the right side of the display, there's three LEDs over here. There's a red one for fault. Of course, it's off right now. We have a green light for charge. And then we have a flashing orange light that means the inverter is on. Upper right hand corner is the solar array voltage, the PV voltage, and it's just jumping back and forth between PV one and two. You can see the one we have hooked up is about 429 volts. And then on the grid, we've got 126 volts per leg and then we got 120 volts per leg on the output side. So on the display, you can use the up and down arrows and, and you can change the information that it is displaying. So we were looking at the voltage, but you can also look at the, the wattage, you can look at the amperage, you can see all of the kilowatt hours, um, but you can just scroll through there and you can see all of the data. So our first test is gonna be an output test. We're going to see if we can get this thing to output 6,500 watts or really close to it for a long period of time. All right. So this heater here, I think it's about 4,000 watts. I can hear the fans coming on on the inverter. So I went ahead, I've turned the grid breaker off, so it's only running off the inverter and the battery. We're pulling 4,700 watts. I'm going to go ahead and kick on a couple heat guns, lowest setting. I'm going to go ahead and dial them up a little bit. Looks like we're about 5,600 watts. Pulling about 22 amps off each leg. And she tripped out. She didn't quite make it to the 6,500 watts. So the reason it faulted out was not because it overloaded on the output. It was because the battery is not supplying enough amperage to the inverter. The, the battery is just not quite big enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab another battery and we'll get that hooked up on here and then we'll try again. All right, I got two server rack batteries hooked up to it now, so it should be able to do max output. Kick the heater back on. Go ahead and turn my heat guns back on. Almost 24 amps of output. So at max output of 6,500 watts, I should have 27 amps on each leg Right now we're about 26. That one's actually a little high, it's on 27. That one leg, I'm pulling a little too much. All right, well, I just tripped it out. I, I had this one at 26.9, I had the other one, it jumped up to like 27 and a half, and I was trying to dial it down, so it stayed uh, over output, you know, it was, it was outputting more than 6,500 watts for probably 10 seconds. I tried to get it to dial down and it finally tripped down on me, tripped out on me. So I think that proves that you can, it will output 6,500 watts, but if you go above that, it's, it's only gonna last a few seconds and it'll trip out. So now we've got fault number 14, which means it overloaded. We got the red fault light 
It's going to take three minutes and then it's going to automatically reset. So the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to go flip one of my interlocks on one of my breaker panels and that's going to allow the Sun Gold Power to power up this whole workshop. I've got some high bay lights in here, I've got a couple fans going and I've got a three ton mini split. So air conditioner. So we'll see if it can power everything. All right, switching it over. All right, so right now with just the fans and the high bay lights going, we're pulling 1200 watts. It's gonna take a couple minutes for the air conditioner to reset. The air conditioner's starting to ramp up. You can hear the fans kicking up on the inverter. And we're about up to 3000 watts of output right now. Yep, right at 3000 watts. So now while we're running the lights and we're running the air conditioner, see if we can kick on some power tools. So it did kick on the miter saw, but it did dim the lights there for a split second when it kicked on, but it didn't overload. So this is my DeWalt 13 inch planer. So it did kick on the planer. You could tell that it blinked the lights a couple times and the planer started up a little bit slower, but once again, it did start it and we didn't overload. Just gonna kick it on one more time and just see what the wattage is. It was pulling about a total of 5,000 watts with everything going. So my initial thoughts on the Sun Gold Power Inverter, it does seem to be built well, it looks good. It's pretty straightforward on how you wire everything up. Now the Wi-Fi dongle, I will say that, you know, it gave instructions on how to hook it up, but there was really no instructions on how to set it up. So I tried to Google it. Uh, I did download an app, which I thought was the correct app, but it, the app kept on erroring out on me. I could get, never get the app to work. So I, I never got the Wi-Fi dongle set up on it. The communication protocol does seem to work. It knows the, uh, it knows like the voltage of the battery, the amperage also knows the temperature. So it seems like the communication between the battery and the inverter is working, but keep in mind this is a Sun Gold Power battery talking to a Sun Gold Power inverter. That definitely should work. So it did output a full 6,500 watts when we were testing it with the heaters. But when we started the saw, you could tell that the surge capacity may, may not be much higher than that because when we started the saw, the lights did blink a little one time. And then when we started the planer, the lights actually blinked like twice. And the planer, you could tell it started up a lot slower. So that just tells me it just doesn't have uh, a surge capacity much higher than the 6,500 watts to be able to start those motors and compressors. So if you were using this inverter to power a cabin or maybe a small house, the loads that would you would see that you needed that surge capacity where the lights may dim a little bit, that would be more than likely when your air conditioner kicked on. Most of the other loads in your house aren't gonna have a huge surge capacity unless maybe you have like a well pump. Now the things that I think they can improve on this inverter, I will say I was not fond of the terminals that are in here. I struggled trying to get them to tighten down. I found out that a number two screwdriver actually doesn't really fit inside of them. I had to use a number one screwdriver to actually reach the inside there and, and turn the terminal properly. And then the other thing was I wired this up. It says to use eight gauge wire for 240 volt power. I used six gauge wire and six gauge was very tight. I did get it in there. And, and got it to tighten down. But I think six gauge is probably the maximum wire size that the terminals would handle. But if you look at the book and you wanna wire this up for 120 volt only, the book says you need to use a four gauge wire for the neutral. And I don't think you would ever fit a four gauge wire in these terminals. So I think that they could do, uh, they could improve the terminals, make them a little bit better, make them so that a screw, like a normal screwdriver fits in them a little bit easier. And you can see I added a PV disconnect switch here so that I can turn off the solar and be able to, to work on it safely. It'd be nice if they did add a PV disconnect switch to it as well. But you can always buy one like this. I think this cost me probably 30, 40 bucks to buy this disconnect switch. It's not, it's not outrageous to buy one. It's just really convenient when they include it in on the built into the inverter. So right now I really can't think of anything else that I would probably 
complain about or say that they could improve on this. So overall, this seems like a pretty decent little inverter. It's uh, nice and light, easy to install, and it can handle up to 10,000 watts of solar, which is really good for an inverter this size. And you have the ability to switch it from 240 volts to 120 volt only, which what that does is when it's 240 volts, you're always trying to make sure your loads are balanced because if you get one of line one or line two, you get one a lot higher. You could actually overload this, the inverter uh, just with one leg. And if you combine those together and just have 120 volts, you won't have to worry about load balancing. And I think one thing that makes the inverter appealing, at least right now, is it's on sale on Sun Gold Power's website. Looks like they're doing some kind of Prime Day sale. It's uh, running through July 2nd through the 14th. And right now the inverter is only $1,250. I mean, that's like, to me, that's like pre-COVID pricing, right? So that's a pretty good price uh, for a 6,500 watt inverter that can have 10,000 watts of solar. So if you guys are interested in this inverter, I will leave a link to Sun Gold Power's website down in the description below and you can check it out. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.